YouTubers, welcome to Cowside Chat. This is Jamie, and this is where I talk about homestead related things and the world around us while I milk my cow or let her gr eat grain uh, if we're not milking. I thought I'd talk about when you're looking for a cow and you're going to visit people to check out the cows that they have for sale, the kinds of questions that are good to ask so you know if the cow is a good is going to be a good family milk cow. First, you want to make sure that a cow is bred before they're sold to you. Um, that's usually how cows, milk cows, are going to be sold. If they're not bread that actually is something of a concern. You don't know if they're selling the cow because she couldn't get bread. Maybe they tried four or five times and had no success and so now they're culling her. Um, you also want to know how many calves she's had or how old she was when she had her first calf. And then you need to ask, well why was she so old or why was she so young? when she had her first calf. Usually you want a cow to be two years old when they have their first calf. I find that the older a cow is when she has her first calf, the more persnickety and kicky and troublemaking they can be because um, they just have gone so long uh, doing their own thing. So you also want to know if she, so she, if she's bred what was she bred to? If it's her first calf, it's really important to know what she was bred to and if the sire uh, throws large babies or small calves. For a heifer, that's a, that's a, a cow that hasn't had a baby before, um, you want to make sure to match a bull, uh, match her with a bull so she has a small first calf. Otherwise, you can sometimes struggle and have to, maybe the calf will get stuck um, on its way out in the birth canal uh, because it's too big. Um, so you always want your heifers to be well matched to um, a sire that throws small calves. Also pay attention to the udder. Uh, if the cow is only four years old and her udder is down past her hocks, uh, that's something to be concerned about. Uh, her udder probably won't be able to handle years and years of service. A healthy udder has four even teeth, not six, not, not really teeny short ones or really super long ones that, or a mix uh, where you, it makes it hard to milk. Uh, if you want a milk cow to milk my hand, you want longer teeth. The shorter they are, the less fingers you can use, and then you're just milking like this, and it's awful. So when you're looking for a cow, you also want to see if she's ever had miscarriages. Maybe she has lost her calves, uh, you know, prematurely. So those are important questions to ask. If you can have the seller of the cow uh, show, like, let either let you uh, do a test milking or have them, if you're kind of wondering if the cow will even allow, even stand to be milked, have the seller demonstrate that she can be safely milked. It's no fun when you're new to cows and you're trying to learn all about them and how to milk by hand or with a machine while dealing with a kicky cow. A cow that's from a dairy um, is actually going to be, I find they're less friendly, but they don't kick. I have, they are, they just stand there and do their job 
without any fuss, which is really nice. You also want to ask about mastitis, which is an infection in the udder. If a cow has had it many times, there's a problem, and that's something you probably don't want on your farm. Um, that just ends up being very expensive, and that's probably why they're selling the cow. Um, there's also another type of mastitis that is permanent, and I had one cow um, have to be put down for it. It's called uh, Staph A, and if it gets into the udder, it'll get go in really, really deep up inside, and then create like a, the body ends up creating a, a, a shell almost um, around it. And so there, you can put as much medicine into their udder as you want to try and stop the infection or the flare-up, but then um, it can't get to those pockets inside the udder. And so over time, it can take over the entire udder and actually go septic and take over their whole body uh, and just get into their bloodstream. So you want to make sure that they... Uh, do not have mastitis when you're purchasing them and then you need to know if they've had it multiple times or not. Another thing to ask about is lice. Have they had lice before? Have they been dewormed before? Are they vaccinated or unvaccinated? Have they had any um, other diseases, maybe sexually transmitted diseases between um, bulls? Is the herd clean and free of disease um, so when it comes to your house it won't be passing on diseases to any of your cattle if you have cattle already. Other breeds, some breeds are really good for cheese making. If you, if you go online you can look up um, this, the breed statistics and you can actually learn about like percentages. So there's protein percentage, percentage, fat percentage, all sorts of things. And um, depending on your needs, you can actually shoot for a specific breed um, that suits you best for the kinds of goals you have for your farm. There's also breeds that calf uh, their babies much easier. And then there's other breeds that you might have loads of cream on all of your your milk, but like jerseys, but they can also have a tendency to get milk fever. And so then that's a big deal at calving time. Um, there's some some breeds have need more help than others pulling calves, for example. Some breeds eat a whole lot more than other breeds. Guernsey cows eat a lot less than Holstein cows, for example. Holsteins can make a ton of milk and they're made to make a lot of milk and eat a whole bunch in order to do that, but they don't make a lot of cream. Some breeds do better in hot climates than others. Some do better in cool climates than others. So those are all things you can research before uh, you go shopping for a cow and just buy one willy-nilly. If you're buying a cow, say from up north and bringing it to a hot climate, I would definitely uh, make sure you plan on bringing it in the fall so it has the entire five, six, seven months of winter and cool season to acclimate before it hits the summer because it can be really, really hard on them and you'll lose all milk production, they'll lose weight, and it'll be really tough if you just bring them from the north uh, into the, the dead of summer. Most cows don't have trouble adjusting from uh, a warm climate to a cool climate. Cows prefer to have it about 45 degrees uh, for milk making, and so that's when you'll have the best milk production uh, of the year, is when it's nice and cool outside. 
happy, calm, quiet cows that have a routine make more milk than cows that are getting chased around or stressed, um, that don't have enough food. Cows must have 24-7 hay and then you can supplement with you know, grain or alfalfa, uh, but they have to have a round bale to eat on at all times. All right, well that's it for now. Thank you for watching. We're a new channel, so please comment, like, and subscribe to help us grow. We'll see you next time.